It's normal to get anxious every now and then. It's fine to worry sometimes. Fear is a natural reaction to things that can potentially bring us harm. But what if these things became excessive and overbearing? That's when we have ourselves an anxiety disorder. It's when feelings of anxiety persistently stick to you. They can be lingering over your head regularly or they can happen in repeated episodes. Some people have triggers for their anxiety and some can have panic attacks. Panic attacks can be horribly intense experiences. Living life full of unease isn't very healthy as you can imagine. It's sure to lower your mental health and interfere with your quality of life in general. Constant panic might just get in the way of relationships, work, school, and leisure. There are plenty of types of anxiety disorders out there, including general anxiety disorder, panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, specific phobias, separation anxiety, selective mutism, and medication-induced anxiety disorder. Causes of anxiety can be traumatic life events, chemical imbalances, genetics, drug withdrawal or use, and medical conditions. There are ways of treating anxiety disorders like medication and psychotherapy. Combining these with improving your lifestyle can go a long way. Welcome to Games for Healing. Here we like to look at video games that involve mental health, life struggles, and life lessons with some games for relaxing too. The game you're about to see is 20 to 30 minutes long. It looks and plays very basic. I wouldn't call it a great game, but I would call it a shining beacon of potential. It was made by a 17 year old, which is really impressive. Her name is Emily Mitchell, and she released the game in 2017. Anytime I hear of a younger game developer, I'm immediately reminded of how this guy made this guy at the age of 19. Emily's game is called Fractured Minds and it's inspired by her personal journey with severe anxiety. Fractured Minds can also be viewed as a game about depression and mental illness in general. It's a first person puzzle game that puts you through six different scenarios which are meant to resemble the challenges that come with living with mental illness. They're presented in a sort of abstract way that lets you interpret them however you like. The first chapter is called The Mundane. It sees you in your bedroom, where the goal is to leave the room, but the door is locked. There's a key hidden somewhere. The issue is that there's a ton of keys, and each time you pick up the wrong one, a piece of text saying, wrong key, will cover the screen. What is normally a place of peace and comfort is turned into a place of stress. I think that what's going on here represents how anxiety can make seemingly simple tasks a lot more difficult than they need to be. It might make leaving the safety of your room a challenge. What's normally mundane is made a trial. Chapter 2 is called Emptiness and places us in what appears to be a birthday party. You'll have to do a few party related tasks like pinning the tail on the donkey, hitting a piñata, and opening some presents. Something seems off though. The text at the bottom of the screen and this drawing on the wall make it clear that the main character is unhappy in a situation where everyone else is having a good time. A person experiencing anxiety or depression might wonder why they just can't have a great time like everyone else. They might think that they're broken. Other people might simply tell them that they should be enjoying themselves, but it's more complicated than easily doing that. Chapter 3 is called Comfort Zone. It takes place in a very cozy room with a comfy chair and a warm fire. Picking up the magnifying glass will let you see things in the room up close. If you magnify the snow globe, you'll end up inside it. Entering the cozy cabin inside will reveal that it's got the same cozy room inside of it from before. I think that this represents how people place barriers around themselves. How people can have layers and layers of protection placed around their hearts out of fear of being hurt or hurting others. Anxiety can make people build walls. Everybody needs comfort zones. Getting out of those comfort zones every now and then is just a part of life. Staying in the comfortable forever prevents you from making new experiences and learning new things. Chapter 4 is called Paranoia. It takes place in a city full of people who are all looking at their phones. 
Their backs all have symbols on them and you have to interact with the symbols in the correct order to unlock the way forward. I don't quite understand what this chapter means in regards to paranoia. Perhaps the paranoia here is the worry that everyone here is constantly watching. Even the cars look like blobs with eyes. The people are looking at their phones. The phones are emanating light. Maybe they're videoing you? The protagonist might be paranoid about the way others perceive them. When you complete the puzzle, you're placed in this room. One person is chained to a chair while another is taking a picture of them, assuming that's a phone in their hand. Then there's a crack and we're buried in rubble. The clock that was on the table might represent that this person has been hiding their mental illness for a long time and they're paranoid about people seeing it. The person pointing their phone at them might represent how the main character is always in the spotlight being watched by others, or it could mean expectations from others. Chapter 5 is called Sinking. You'll have to avoid red lights while trying to solve a puzzle. The puzzle involves opening drawers to find batteries for a TV remote, then turning on the TV to get a password to open a door. Before the chapter starts, there's a section where we go downstairs into a cage with a door. The most I can assume about it is that this is another situation involving mental illness making simple tasks more difficult than they actually are. The red lights might represent people that you're trying to avoid. The main character might be leaving their safe zone bedroom to go downstairs and they're trying to avoid people in the living room. The final chapter is called Monster. It places us inside of some sort of boiler room with a chained up heart as the set piece. After interacting with it, we meet the monster. This isn't the monster's first appearance. The game has been building up to this moment all along. Throughout the previous chapters, there are bits and pieces of imagery teasing this monster, including a mask with its smiling face and it appearing on walls. The monster will create a barrier separating you and the heart. The puzzle here is to turn the correct valves to damage the creature based on where it's standing. It's very easy. Once you break the barrier and approach the heart again, it will turn black and the beast will hold a mirror up to you. Plot twist. You were the monster this whole time. Sadly, it's common for people with mental illnesses to view themselves this way. I think this chapter is similar to the comfort zone chapter in that it involves locking ourselves away. In this case, the heart is shown locked up with a wall covering it up as well. This is where the game ends. No happy ending, just a harsh realization about the way some people perceive themselves. I like the monster's design. The mask from the beginning of the game that it wears shows us how some people put on a smile while dealing with deep issues inside. You can find Fractured Minds on PC, mobile devices, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. I played on the Switch and it made the controls feel very awkward. Controlling the camera with the right analog stick while pressing A to interact with things felt sluggish. I think the game would control a lot more smoothly on PC with a mouse. Just move the mouse for the camera and click to interact. At least that's how I assume it controls on PC. You can also jump in this game. It doesn't really serve much purpose and doesn't feel good to do. I used the jump to get over something once in the playthrough so it definitely feels like it didn't need to be included. The puzzles are very simple and doable. A few of them might make you think for a moment. If you know how to do the puzzles in advance, then the game's 20 to 30 minute length can be slashed down to be even shorter. I like the concepts of the chapters, but I feel like a lot more could have been done with them. The game's music is definitely good. It consists of several hauntingly beautiful piano tracks. Fractured Minds isn't a good game, but rather I would consider it to be more of an educational tool or an insight into its creator's perception of anxiety and depression. It's an interactive short story. It feels like playing a student's project. I don't think it was meant to be fun in that the priority was to express the feelings of anxiety and depression. The creator had nothing but good intentions. It's dedicated to those who struggle. 
80% of the money the game makes goes to a mental health organization. It only costs a few dollars to purchase. Despite its flaws, I think it will resonate with people if they can relate to the feelings expressed. While I can't say I enjoyed Fractured Minds, I do find it very interesting conceptually. I liked analyzing it. I can appreciate it for what it tries to achieve and for the great potential the creator has shown at such a young age. Imagine what she can do with more years of experience, a bigger budget, and more assets. I think she could do awesome things. With the drive to make games and a desire to spread mental health awareness, I bet that if she attempted to make another game about mental health down the road, it could be really something special. This first attempt at game creation shows promise. Making a video game is a long and difficult process, so kudos to her for seeing her vision through to the end. She developed this game all by herself and that's impressive. There aren't a ton of games out there about mental health and mental health awareness. The medium has a lot of potential to be tapped into. To the creator of this game, I hope that things have gotten better for you mentally since the release of this game. To those of you watching who struggle, I hope that things have gotten better for you or will get better for you soon. Until next time, I'll see you later. Stay strong out there.